Party people, the place to be, what's going on, it's me, it's me. I just got finished watching Lovebirds. Now, you may be asking, Surreal, why on earth would you sit and watch Lovebirds? That doesn't seem like the type of movie you would want to see, and you're right. It turns out, as I watched the movie, the further and further I got into it, the more and more I didn't necessarily want to watch this movie. But I was already invested in it, so I had, in terms of time, in terms of time, I was already invested in it, so I had to continue to watch it. Uh, I will we'll, we'll start, we'll try to do non-spoiler territory to start, and then we'll get into the movie. Why I decided to watch this movie to begin with was because... I looked at the posters. This is one of the movies that really did get a lot of coverage in terms of billboards and advertisements before the world fell apart. And so it was one of those movies that I was like, ah, that doesn't, I, I, I got an opinion on it just looking at the billboards. Yes, I know, you can't judge a book by its cover. You gotta watch the thing, you gotta watch the thing. How could you know? How do you know? How exactly do you know? I just do, I just do. Well, except for in this case. In this case, I looked at the picture for Lovebirds, and Lovebirds stars Issa Rae, and what's this dude's name? And the problem with this dude is I keep, and this is the problem with just, they don't necessarily look alike, but this is the, like, he he breaks onto the scene, uh, like, he's noted, or had got some notoriety around the same time as the dude that killed Apu, and you know their names aren't aren't similar but they you know he neither one of them are named like ben or anything like that i know that sounds so racist well the problem is they broke it about the same time and so <laughs> i and so every time this guy comes out with something i have to check i'm like is that the dude that killed apu no it's not okay uh it's kumail nanjani kumail nanjani um and it's a ray and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the piss posters and I'm looking at the billboards and I'm thinking to myself, before this movie comes out, I'm like, how the fuck does that couple happen? Like, yeah, like this is like this is just some real world shit. Like I'm just sitting there and looking, I'm like, he doesn't get her. <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't get her. He doesn't get this array. Eh, no, he doesn't get this array. He gets, he gets. I don't know who he gets, but it's not Issa Rae. Like, they don't line up. They don't match. And I know, I know, you know, it happens all the time in Hollywood where, you know, the guy shoots out of his league and gets the hotter woman. And I'm trying to fix the lighting here. Well, let's move that over. That's better. Where the guy gets the, uh, where the, the guy that doesn't deserve the hot chick gets the hot chick and all this other stuff. But I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the post and I'm like, no, that day they, they, they don't look like a couple that works. And like just from looks, like just from look wise, they don't look like a couple that works. And that look wise thing, I keep kicking the stupid table. <laughs> the look wise thing carries over into the movie. Uh, but that's not the reason why this couple works. This couple doesn't work because the couple doesn't work. It's it's one of these movies where you, you got a couple that's fighting through all the misadventures that they're going through. And the poster lets you know that there's some misadventures and stuff. And I think the trailer even notes some of the stuff. Um, so it's not too much spoiler territory. It's, you know, kind of like here are these people and their misadventures throughout the city, right, is the story. And I, I'm sitting there watching and I'm like, not only does he never get her, like not only in real life does he never get Issa Rae, like of all, like of all chicks, he never gets Issa Rae. Like he might, I don't even know who he gets, but it ain't Issa Rae. And then, and, and the movie keeps going and I'm like, oh, they definitely don't go together and they definitely don't stay together. This, they, they don't have chemistry. They just don't have really any chemistry in terms of in terms of them as a couple uh even as friends i would i would question how they become friends i would say they're friends because one of them is dating the other one's friend you know what i mean and it would be him dating one of her friends i would say they don't they don't they don't mesh well 
on screen. You know what I mean? So uh, it doesn't really work. And then you have to follow them through these misadventures. And it's one of these buddy movies where they have to rely on each other through the misadventures. And that relationship is the crux of those movies. You have to believe that the people involved would, for one reason or another, like the other people in the movie. You have to believe that. At some point, even if they don't at first, you have to believe at least past the first or maybe second misadventure that they like each other, right? Classic example, Adventures in Babysitting, right? You know, you got the kids, you know why the kids are together, you know why the kids are in each other's lives. You have the babysitter, the good adventures, the actual adventures of babysitting, not that Disney movie, Disney Channel crap. You got Chris Parker, uh, you get why she likes Sarah, you get why she tolerates Brad, you you then eventually get why she and Daryl eventually like each other through the circumstances. You get those relationships, you understand why those people like the other people, Why? Uh, what makes that group tick, what makes that group run the the differences and the differences help make that group this doesn't work that way like the the differences and even the similarities because they the the way they tell jokes and and the kind of humor that they kind of have is is similar in the movie but that doesn't make it like it's 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 not that it's not that they're too similar or that you need some kind of juxtaposition, which might help, but at this, it's just that that particular kind of sense of humor really only works when kind of one person is doing it, or at least in this movie, it would have worked better if only one person was doing it and another kind of person was doing it. This kind of awkward sense of humor that they were that they were going for, very conversational. Sometimes it's 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 humorous, but not necessarily funny. Uh, <laughs> there are only a couple like funny really kind of funny parts in it really only one that i can think of near the end that actually got a uh, audible laugh out of me but everything else doesn't quite work and the fact that this was going to be in movies this was going to be a theatrical release boy boy does that tell me something about the level the 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 quality control of theatrical releases these days now mind you you know, My Spy was also going to be a theatrical release, but, you know, this one was also going to be a theatrical release, and it did not, oh my gosh, all right, so, you got this couple, you got uh, Jabron and uh, uh, Leilani, right, I'm going to call him Jabron just because that's what I was calling him throughout the movie, and that's kind of what he was, uh, they break up and then, but right after the breakup, the misadventures start, and they gotta go through the city figuring stuff out and almost doing a buddy cop thing, and, and you know, eventually they come to a conclusion, okay? That's the non-spoiler part of the review. Uh, uh, I'm warning you now, that was the non-spoiler part of the review, Go ahead and skip, 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 skip to my Lou. There'll be a timestamp in the description when you can skip, skip, skip to the Lou. Uh, might put a flag up here if I if I if I feel creative enough to do that. Skip, skip, skip through that if you really care. You've been warned. I don't care anymore. So Jabron and Leilani, uh, they start off. You see them get together and it's all lovey dovey and they're finishing each other's sentences and they're doing the kind of cute awkward thing of like, well, you want to kiss me? Well, I think you want to kiss me. Well, you want to kiss me and blah, blah, blah. And they hit it off so well the first day. And I think it almost seems like it starts as a one night stand because they come out of one of their apartments and it's like last night was really fun and then they end up hanging out together. And that happens. It's the first time I've seen that happen in a movie. So good, good on the scriptwriter for that. Um, and then four years later, they're just fighting about nothing and they just turn into the Bickersons. They turn into that couple that you don't like to hang around. They turn into that couple of friends that you wouldn't invite to a party. Ironically enough, they get invited to a party that you wouldn't want to hang out with, that you kind of avoid as a couple, uh, because you know, 
you know, it's going to be, you know, the same old shit over and over again and, and, and the fighting over nothing or the fighting over something or the bringing up something that happened 18 years ago that wasn't really that significant then, but for some reason is super significant now because it suits you in the argument. You know, all those kinds of shit, all that kind of thing that, that doesn't work. And even in the beginning when you see them get lovey-dovey and, and get together and, oh, you're so cute and you're so cute, they don't work. They don't work as a couple. I. They have no chemistry as a couple. They're good at faking it. They're good actors in this moment and faking it and, and, and doing their part to project that kind of early relationship uh, energy. But how they got there doesn't work. Like they don't just on a screen, they don't work as a couple for some reason. And I don't, and I don't really know how, I don't really know why. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to work that out in the course of this review as to why they don't really work as a couple, but they don't, they just kind of don't. And so, uh, eventually they, 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 uh, are on their way to the party or whatever, and they break up in the car. And as soon as they break up in the car, their car gets hit by uh they hit you know somebody on a bike just plows into their windshield uh and, <clears throat> and they try to help him out and he takes off and then a cop comes and commandeers the car and chases down the guy in the bike first thing i thought of because again i wasn't really invested in this movie because the moment i saw them on screen i'm like they don't work as a couple like it was hard for them to get me invested in the flick uh, first thing i think is they didn't check this guy's badge <laughs> they didn't they just they just went on ahead with yeah this guy's a cop he can commandeer our car for some reason i get it maybe they were in shock from the from hitting the guy on the bike but it's like can i see a badge sir before you just commandeer my car any but they they fine and so they follow the guy they they you know they believe the cop's story about that guy's a criminal they follow him and the cop runs him over like four or five times runs them over and they just sit there shocked and amazed and the cop gets out of the car uh spoiler alert he turns out to actually be a cop cop gets out of the car uh goes to check on the dead body rather than either one of them hopping in the driver's seat and driving that shit away to get away from this obvious murderer from this obvious psychopath they just sit in the passenger seats and you know they, they, you know, I guess while the guy uh, on the bike got hit, his cell phone fell out. One of them grabbed it. Uh, she grabs it. Uh, he, I guess, goes to check the cell phone and then realizes it isn't there and then, you know, starts menacingly lumbering towards them. And they're like, oh, my God, oh, my God. He pulls out a gun, but then there's sirens, and then he takes off. When he takes off, there's this really millennial couple uh, that come to, that just happen to come through the alley that they're in. Mind you, also in this chase, the guy on the bike could have gotten away a couple of different times had he played with traffic, had he, had he played with the dynamics of traffic around him. Like, yeah, they were in a car and they were coming towards him, but there were a couple of times where like the car probably wouldn't have been able to move forward because of other cars on the side and or in front of them. And he could have easily just like turned around. <laughs> you know what I mean? There were cars behind him. He could have easily like turned around. Like they were blocked in a couple of different times in the scenes. So he could have easily just like turned around or like hit a corner somewhere. You know what I mean? Like he didn't have to get hit. Just the just the choreography of that chase scene didn't really work for me, dog. Um so the so the super millennial couple, and by the way, this movie kind of hits on some super millennial points. But the super millennial couple comes and they're like, oh my God, you killed him. And then they call the cops and they're like, I'm calling the cops. I'm mean, excuse me, I'm calling the cops. This happened to me. They were kind of annoying, but they only lasted on screen for like two minutes. So uh, Leilani and Jabroni, they take off. They just run. They run away. They just take off. Uh, and then they end up at a diner. They're trying to contemplate what, what they're going to do. They get a call from the cops. They answer the call from the cops. They lie to the cops. And the cops are like, ah, you're not at home. You're at a diner. We can hear the waitress. And they're like, oh, shit. And then they take off again. Uh, they, the, uh, Jabroni's got blood on his, on his clothes from the guy on the bike. They go to uh, a liquor store to, uh, or a drug store to get some cheap-ass clothes 
for them to like change out of. Again, I know it's, you know, nighttime. It's not the middle of the night, but it's nighttime. Uh, it's, I'm, I know it's not the middle of the night because they still have a party to get to. Uh, it's nighttime. I know the parking lot may be empty for some reason, which probably wouldn't actually happen. But people would notice them just like changing in the middle of the aisle. Somebody would say something. Uh, <laughs> and then they go like into the back and use some of the uh, some of the the first aid to stitch up Jabron. And it's like somebody would notice that. Like even if this the night crew, there's more than one person on the night crew. Somebody would say something. Anyway, they buy the clothes with the tags on them. Uh, they get a lift, which oh, they go to a park first and try to figure out what to do, and then they change clothes. And I'm and they get a lift, and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I'm like, if the cops are after you. And I thought about this first when they started when they started heading towards the diner, right? Actually, before they head towards the diner, like when they started running, because uh, I think they go to the park first and then the diner. I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, okay, you no, I think it may be after. Either way, because somebody throws away the phone. I think uh, no, the, the cops call her. And then Jabron puts uh, Leilani's phone in a drink and uh, to disable it or whatever. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so you know enough to know that you probably shouldn't answer the phone. How do you not know enough to know they can probably track you on your phone and your credit cards? So if you're going to run, you really can only run with the cash you have in your pocket. Why are you, how, how and why are you buying things at the drugstore? I guess how would be, they just, you know, they don't close your shit. They just track your shit. So why would you, like, they, they bought the stuff at the drugstore. They bought the lift. The lift has a record of where you've been and where you're going. This is the second lift that they have because the first one, they do a shared ride. Why would you, why would you, why? <laughs> why would you? Uh, oh, somewhere in between there. They they get uh, bicycles, what they call the guy they hit on the bike. They call they get bicycles phone, and on it is a date and time to meet somebody at a bar. So they go to this bar, they meet this person, they end up getting kidnapped. She ends up being the wife of a senator, and she ends up interrogating them about what they know and all this other stuff. Um, he ends up getting kicked by a horse because he doesn't choose to be tortured by frying bacon grease. Uh, they end up fighting the senator and their wife and escaping, and that's when they end up at the drugstore. Okay. Um, after the drugstore, they end up going to the party that they were supposed to be at. Uh, after their friends called them and say, hey, where the hell are you guys? They end up going to this party because they need somebody to jailbreak um, the phone of Bicycle. And the guy that's going to jailbreak the phone of Bicycle is the tech guy at Leilani's job. I know, you don't care about this. I don't know why the movie tried to make me care about this. But here we are. And so the guy who's tried to jailbreak the phone, uh, first off, has this shitty, you know, 12-year-old prepubescent mustache. I guess he was going for stubble. It didn't work. He was supposed to be, uh, uh, Jabron is supposed to be jealous of this guy because Leilani talks about him or she looks at him a certain way and it's like she must have a thing for guys that are that are not in her league <laughs> because the the tech guy for all his muscles ain't in her league they she's not like how, how why am I sitting here think you know like are you supposed to try to make this guy none of these guys seem like oh yeah they belong with Issa Rae no none of them None of them, none of them in this movie. Uh, anyway, he's a tech guy he, who just happens to have his laptop at this party. Probably didn't, probably wouldn't have happened. And was able to jailbreak the phone after a stupid cockamamie story about him fighting to cover up all the bruises that he's gotten from the night's events. So into the computer it goes. It does all the deciphering. Wallace does the deciphering. She's in the kitchen talking to her friend about how her friend has the perfect relationship because she sees all the sexy pictures. Uh, and her friend's like, no, I just post those pictures to make my exes jealous. Fucking, fucking games. Oh, like, why? 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 That's stupid. 
And now I don't like the friend either because that's dumb. And so Issa Rae's like, oh. And the friend's like, oh, yeah, no, we fight all the time. You guys are the perfect couple. And makes her reevaluate breaking up with with Jabron. And then Jabron's talking with uh, Keith is his name. And and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, you're, you know, uh, he's, uh, he talks about essentially how he's impressed with Keith because, you know, Keith is the impressive one. And Keith is like, no, no, she, you're the impressive one. She talks about you all the time. Really? She talks about me? And then he looks over at her and reevaluates the relationship, which is one of the least believable things in this movie. It's right up there. It's near the top. And as we keep going in this review, I might end up thinking it is the entire least notable thing about this stupid movie. Um, If not, the other stupid thing is that they sat there and tried to decipher the thing. And it turned out the code was one, two, three, four. The last code the stupid computer puts in is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, that's a code an idiot would have for his briefcase. Yes, Spaceballs, yes it is. And that's the code to this stupid phone. Um, Also, them reevaluating their relationship, no, don't reevaluate it, don't go back. You guys suck, you guys suck as a couple. They sucked as a couple. I would never be rooting for this this duo as a couple. And this movie is trying to make you root for this duo as a couple. Why? They They don't have chemistry, they don't. They could have chemistry with other people, you know, uh, uh, Jabron is not bad, in, like, I, again, I said, for the material they may have gotten, they weren't terrible in acting it out, it just didn't work, it, they just don't, the, the chemistry is just not there. So they decipher the code, the code to the, to the phone leads them to a, a wise wide shut party, Sanctorium, or Santorium, whatever the fuck, eyes wide shut party. Uh, so they go to the eyes wide shut party. People start having sex in the middle of the thing. Uh, it's brought up earlier in the fight at the beginning of the movie that Issa Rae wants to do more freaky shit. If only, if only, if only the movie had been 90 minutes of Issa Rae doing freaky shit. I'd have two thumbs all the way the fuck up. I'd watch that shit. I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. I'd still, you, I, I'd be dead. You wouldn't be able to find me anymore because I'd be watching 90 minutes of Mr. Ray doing freaky shit all day long, every day, every day, just all day, especially now with Instacart, I'd never leave the house. Anyway, that's not what happens. We get Issa Rae arguing with Jabron about freaky shit that he doesn't, that he wants to plan, that he, you know, isn't spontaneous enough, and then um, the the her mentioning it to her friend that she thinks her friend is doing freaky shit and then the pe- the cult people having sex in the middle of the room that they're in uh and she's commenting about her liking the freaky shit jabron just do the freaky shit or take her to the freaky shit fet life exists fetlife.com just go to fucking fet life that shit's easy that's just not hard to find yeah my is that my fact, it's not even that expensive if you're a couple like, you can find it. You just don't necessarily want to find it. She could have found it. She just didn't necessarily want to find it. Anyway. Uh, the orgy stops because the Santorum, Santanctum, Santimonium, Santeria, Crystal Balls, uh, fucking finds out that the code on Bicycle's thing was used to enter the thing. Oh, before all this, before all this, they end up finding an address uh, on at the place where they were interrogated, and they go to the place where they're interrogated, and it's this group of frat boys that are stuffing envelopes that will eventually be used to blackmail members of the sex cult. This is five minutes of the writers and or Issa Rae and or whatever stupid millennials are involved in this shit uh, every frat boy joke, Brett, Brett Kavanaugh, rapey McRape, all the, all the toxic male jokes they could fit into a five minute segment, which weren't funny. They weren't funny. There was nothing that these guys did to warrant them other than them just being young dudes that were listening to rock music while they were stuffing these things. Like there was nothing like they, they just threw out this, this, this Twitter these Twitter insults, and it was like, what's the, it's like, why, like, are you trying to endear me to Jabron and Leilani by having them 
virtue signal about these guys that they know nothing about that we know nothing about as care we don't know anything about them all we know nothing all we know is that they're young dudes in the room that's we know dick about these dudes and you know here we are with the stupid fucking insults like like how would this movie how would the people that this these jokes were targeted towards feel if this is the part of the movie where we see a group of, you know, black dudes doing this and the the white couple comes in and calls them all Jerome and Tyrone and, you know, fucking, you know, Bloods and Crips and all that. It's based off of nothing. You can do you can joke about whatever you want to joke if it's funny, if there's a premise there that works, if we buy into it quickly enough or whatever time frame it is, if you set the shit up properly and we can get into it, you can joke about whatever the fuck you want to. You can make the Brett Kavanaugh jokes and all this other shit that you want to if we're watching fucking a frat house movie, if we're watching a fucking college movie, if we're, you know what I mean, or if you set these characters up in that way, even if they're side characters, they didn't set them up. They didn't do shit. They didn't set them up. They were just, they were just there. That's kind of lazy. And I'm more insulted by the laziness of the writing. It's like, if you're going to do this, and I wonder if this was improv. I wonder if, I wonder how much of this movie was improv because it kind of comes off as improv the way they deliver the lines. And I'm like, you couldn't do another take. <laughs> you couldn't do another couple of takes. Anyway. The cop that commandeered their car comes in as they're interrogating one of the, I guess, frat guys, and uh, which you know, uh, and then they they uh, he ends up killing them, killing all the frat dudes, but he doesn't see them. They end up hiding in a closet, uh, and then he, which is one of those movie tropes that's like, if you're an assassin or if you're deciding that you're gonna kill people, you're gonna check everywhere. You're gonna check, and he was sitting right there at the closet and had the little Venetian blind things like in Halloween, and it's like, eh, come on, he could see them, and or like, you know, get the fuck out, would've just opened the door, you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like if I'm gonna go through the trouble of killing everybody in a house, I'm gonna check for everybody in a house, I'm gonna check for everybody. Like, he got on a phone and everything. Like, he got he got a phone call, and he was a little... But that... Come on. He's gonna check while he's on the phone. He's... Like, he's gonna... Because you're... It was dumb. <laughs> and he was in the room, and he didn't notice that the window was fucking open until after... Well, no, I guess he did notice that the window was open uh, before. And then... But he didn't see anybody else in the house, even though the glass was broken into the inside, so obviously somebody had come into the inside, they didn't escape to go out, so he, it was just, they should have died in that closet, they should have died in that closet, that was a terrible place to hide, they didn't bother trying to escape at that point, uh, until after he left the room, and then they left the closet door open, so now he, you know, remembers that they're alive, even though he remembered that they were alive when he fucking hijacked their car and just took off, so, why wouldn't he be after them at that? I guess because he had to clear up all the other loose ends, but fucking stupid. Anyway, they take off. Um, and that's when they end up going to the sex cult. The sex, they uh, end up getting found out in the sex cult because they used bicycles code to get in. Uh, and then uh, as they, all the members were about to fucking uh, uh, out them and I guess kill them or whatever they were going to do to them because we don't know um then the cops come in and but they're alerted that the cops come in so all the members of the sex cult escape except for them because they're just sitting there like what the fuck just happened and the cops come in and the cops take them to the police station and say hey we know you were involved with this we got traffic cameras all over the place that saw that you didn't kill that guy purposefully like you you were you you know you got your car hijacked and this that and the other and we'll protect you and we'll take care of you and we'll send you home and protect you no 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 I'll sleep in the police station, thank you very much. If you know, listen, if you are aware that I didn't commit a crime and are not, you know, you're not looking for me because you think I'm a criminal, you think I'm a witness and you want to protect me, I'll sleep in the police station. You got a cot? I'll sleep on the cot. I, fine. I'll sleep on the cot. I'm not, no, I'm not going to my house. No. 
because I've seen too many movies and too many TV shows and too many this, that, and that, and the other, where the fucking beat cop always gets fucking killed just before, <laughs> just before the bad guy kills the fucking witness that they're trying to get to. Fuck that. The bad guy's got to run through an entire police station before they fucking get to me. No, I'm not doing that. That's no, no. Give me an, give me an LAPD police shirt then a fucking cot and I'll sleep there with the stale coffee and all that other bullshit before I go back to the fucking house. But they decide they're going to go back to the house because we've established in this movie over a couple of different parts that they're fucking stupid. Also, they, they sit there and they go on this two or three minute rant kind of spilling out spilling their guts to the 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 detective that's on their case about i roll through stops all the time and all this other stuff and i've you know i felt like killing him a couple of different times not killing him but like ah, i want to kill you wring your neck all this stupid shit shut up you're in a police station shut up you're in a police station in an interrogation room even if they decide you're witnesses Shut up until they ask you the pertinent questions to the case. What did you see? Then talk about what you saw. Don't talk about all the fucking rolling stops and parking tickets and shit. Shut the fuck up. That's all. I was sitting there like, shut the fuck up. But before the interrogation starts, a couple cops, I guess uh, a couple of detectives are behind the two-way mirror and they're looking at them because they're in the they're in the interrogation room together which is another thing that would never happen and they're sitting there and they're talking about their relationship and we're over and all all this other stuff and you know they're looking at each other kind of forlornly and then the the detectives are like god i don't want them to break up and relationships are a motherfucker and i'm sitting there like no, they should never have been together in the first place. Yeah, I'll break them up. I'm not rooting for this couple. I'm not rooting for this fucking couple. Uh, so they start getting taken back to their apartment, but it turns out the cop that is taking them in the police car is the cop that hijacked their car in the first place. He actually is a cop. He's just a dirty one. Um, they wouldn't have seen that before they got in the car. He had a very distinctive haircut. He had a very distinctive look. You wouldn't have noticed, and he wasn't in he wasn't in his blues. He was in street clothes. You wouldn't have fucking noticed the guy fucking driving you. You wouldn't have seen like you wouldn't have seen that it was the same fucking guy. Like at any point in getting into the fucking car, you wouldn't have seen that. At any fucking point, get the fuck out of here get the fuck out of here um at this it was at this point that the movie went back to the unbelievable stuff when they were in the interrogation room i remember thinking i'm like really are they gonna try to wrap this movie up right now like and come back to logic it's like if you're gonna go all the way off the logic cliff go all the way off the logic cliff it almost seemed like they were trying to bring it back which is a bit disturbing because it was a tonal change that i was like ah i don't like this tonal change like this isn't the world that you've already built over the past 80 minutes. This isn't the world you already built. So anyway, the cop is going to, you know, shoot them on a boat and dump them off a pier for some reason. But he zip ties them behind the back uh, and he goes to prepare the boat. As he goes to prepare the boat, Issa Rae takes the, puts a cigarette lighter in and takes it out and then tries to burn their way through the plastic um, on the hand restraints. Okay. Rather than as soon as, you know, they're out of the car, try to attack the cop or whatever, they let the cop lead them to the boat. With the hand restraints still kind of on, we're still on them, and you can see behind their back and he's walking them behind them. We you not notice that the hand restraints aren't the same that they may have melted would he not have smelt the burnt plastic when he got back in would he not have seen that they're not secure the way that they used to be when he put them on how would he not notice any of that stuff on both of them leading him to the boat but he doesn't another another stupid part of this movie but he doesn't and he leads him to the boat and he starts telling he does the bad guy thing of oh well you know i tried to take you back to your your thing but i was ambushed out of the bushes and then he made you kneel and then he's gonna shoot you just before he shoots me and then this that of the, he explains his plan the way he explained to the cops and they're kneeling and then they eventually break 
the the zip ties and they start scuffling with them. By the way, this is the second or third fight uh, that they've been in with one of the bad guys. Issa Rae is entirely useless. <laughs> She's entirely useless. She picks up the lightest shit to hit bad guys with. She just she doesn't hit them. She just kind of throws them in the general direction. She doesn't fucking hit, pick like pick up like the. The, the 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 anchor or the big steel chair or the fucking like she in the in the barn with the horse she picks up like horseshoes and like throws them at the the people that are fighting with jabroni she fuck she doesn't actually use any she's a terrible fighter terrible like pick up anything big and hit these people with the shit to knock somebody out or to possibly kill them to save your own lives she's terrible at this shit so they end up with the fight. Uh, she ends up with the gun. Uh, Jabron ends up in a chokehold, uh, and she, you know she's like, he's like, oh, you don't have a shot. You don't have a shot. And Jabron's like, yeah, we're gonna do this. They through the movie they've done this one, two, three thing. One, two, three, and then run was the first one. One, two, three, and he was gonna attack, but she ran. And so this is the third one, two, three. The law of threes in comedy. They do the one, two, three thing again. And this time it works. Jabroni ducks. She shoots the bad guy. The bad guy falls off the boat. He comes back up and she hits him with one of those red uh, Baywatch floaty things, which knocks him out and into the ocean. Fuck out of here. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. And they lay on the boat and they hold hands as they lay on the boat. And then they get fixed up. And there's a bad VO of the detective telling him we got the suspect. And then she walks away. And turns out they end up staying together and kissing in the back of the ambulance and planning on doing it in the back of the ambulance that freaky and spontaneous enough for you and then fast forward a year later and they're on the amazing race i forgot to mention one of the things they argue about is going on the amazing race and the big stinger at the end of the movie was uh the they're about to win but then there are horses and he gets pts and he doesn't even like get real like funny ptsd from the horses they just see horses that they have to ride i guess for the next part of it and say oh shit and that's it this movie's lame dog <laughs> this movie's lame i cannot believe they were going to put this in theaters i cannot believe this matter of fact hold on let me imdb Issa real quick does she what other movies has she been in? Because I swear to God, if this was her theatrical debut, she should fire her agent. <laughs> if this was going to be her theatrical... Oh, shit. She's, she, we were born like three days apart. Same year and everything. Uh, if this was going to be her theatrical debut, she should fucking fire her agent because this movie's terrible. Uh, hold on, let's see, let's see, where's the IMDb, there we go, boom. What other movies was she in? Please tell me she was in better movies than this. So I know she did, I know she's, I know she, you know, Insecure, like that's her show, she wrote it, and everything. What other movies was she in? Insecure, uh, let's see, uh, oh, The Photograph, that's right, that movie was supposed to come out. Or is supposed to come out. Uh, I didn't see that one. Little, I heard that one was actually... I That one didn't get great reviews, which is a shame because people like the little girl. But it didn't... And she wrote it, but it didn't get great reviews. Uh, Bitter Lime, never heard of it. Uh, um, uh, that's it. So it wasn't necessarily her theatrical debut, but she ain't off to a great start. Uh, and that's a shame. Oh, and The Hate You Give, um, I guess, was her, was her second movie. The first one was A Bitter Lime, but the first, the first big one that anybody would know would have been The Hate You Give in 2018. And I really didn't hear anything about that. Um, wow. Wow. She's, uh, this is not a great, it's lame, it's fucking lame, and I don't like the people in this movie, and I'm supposed to like the people in this movie, for the genre of buddy 
road trip over the city cop whatever the fuck movies i'm you're supposed to like the characters the characters even and and that likability will take you past all the unbelievability they can fucking fly rocket ships out of their ears and you wouldn't care if you like the characters enough and if they built this world up well enough where you could be like oh yeah that happens in that world right like it doesn't matter if you like the characters enough um for the most part likability goes a long way sometimes you like the characters but you know they're still in a shitty movie and you still don't like the movie but you like the characters this one doesn't have either like it's it's if it was improved, they shouldn't have improved as much as they improved. Uh, if they delivered the lines as well, you know, to make it seem like improv, then I guess good for them. Like that's 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 a style. That's 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 something they were able to do. But not a fan of this. Not <laughs> not a fan of this at all. Uh, the the story is stupid. <laughs> the story is dumb there are too many holes where again because i don't like these people as a couple as people as people they're fine i wouldn't want to follow them for 90 minutes though certainly not two of them certainly not two of them you can put one of them in there with a with a, maybe a group of people of like you know another two maybe three people in the group and if if the shine of those particular characters with those insecurities and picadillos and all this other stuff wasn't the main focus, they would seem like they would they they would be perfect in that role and people would I think gravitate towards it better. But I'm sitting there watching this and I'm like, I don't like these people together. I don't like these people as a couple. I don't like these people as friends. I don't like following these people through all these misadventures and and I you know, kind I like I I I this is really the first Issa Rae thing I've really ever seen. Uh yes, I know. I'm super late to the Issa party. But I'm sitting there and I'm like, she seems like cool people. I don't want to follow her through this movie though. I'd rather follow her through something else. I don't want to follow her through this movie. And Jabron, I don't want to follow him through the movie either. And he's he's, you know. <sighs> He's kind of a he's kind of a pussy, but not like a funny, not like a funny pansy, not like not like a funny wimp or geek or anything like that. He's just kind of with the neurosis and stuff like that. He's 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 kind of muted. Maybe like that character would be funnier if it wasn't so muted, and maybe that's a sign of the times. Maybe that's because you know it's 2019 slash when they made it slash 2020 or whatever the fuck, and you gotta shape it towards the time that it's in and all this other stuff. But whatever the reason, it is it's not it doesn't work, and ne none of this stuff is larger than life. The misadventures aren't larger than life. The funniest, the thing that actually got a joke, uh, uh, audible laugh out of me was they were at the party trying to explain why they were late and the scars and somebody at the party was talking to jabron and he's got scars all over his face and stuff and somebody was like is that blood on your face and jabron says yes it's a, it's it's a it's a big disgrace get it queen uh we will rock you <laughs> <laughs> I actually got it. I was like, ha ha ha. That's funny. And they left it there. They didn't they didn't expand upon it. He didn't go for 20 minutes just reciting the lyrics. I was like, ah, Queen. Yeah, that's kind of funny. That's it. That's that's all the laughs. Like there was like even with the horse kicking him in the ribs, that was humorous. But then because the because the people that were holding him were like, oh, you get the bacon grease, so you get kicked in the ribs by kicked by a horse. Or you get door number two, and they open the door, and there's a horse, and she goes, and the horse kicks and hits Jabron right in the chest. And then he looks at Issa Rae and is like, take the grease. No! Why would you take the fuck? No! Take a kick in the fucking... Well, no! What the fuck? Stupid. Stupid. And not that funny. Like, the, the, the jokes didn't... Like, the jokes were there, but they didn't really land some of them were kind of lazy a lot of them were kind of lazy the story was kind of lazy and dumb ah no uh <laughs> if you're asking for a rating for this movie i would tell you 
this movie out of fifteen dollars is worth five out of fifteen. It ain't good. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to give it that because uh, I'm trying to think. There's not really anything I liked about this movie. Like I can't really point to any characters. Uh, any actors that kind of projected on screen, like, yeah, I, I kind of like them, this, that, or the other, the cinematography, none of this stuff, you know what I mean, the story, uh, four out of five, four out of 15, <laughs> four out of 15 dollars, the more I think about it, four out of, it's, because it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, I don't hate it, it's just not good, <laughs> four out of 15 dollars, it ain't good, it ain't even, it's not even worth half of a Netflix subscription for a month, to have this on the thing, it's not, it certainly wouldn't have been worth a theatrical release, and it's probably one of the best things for this movie that it didn't get a theatrical release, because I can't imagine it not bombing, I can't imagine this not bombing, and they plastered, I don't know about your place, you where you live, but in LA, they plastered posters of this stupid thing all over the place, it was on every other bus, there were billboards all over the place, put a lot of money in advertising for it, I did, I saw like maybe one or two trailers, uh, <clears throat> they put a lot of money for advertising into this, but I'm sitting there thinking, I don't like anybody in this movie, uh, I, like, they're fine, they're somewhat tolerable, but I wouldn't want to spend 90 minutes with them, like I mentioned, this is not the couple that you'd want to invite to a party, or go out with, or anything, celebrate anything with, like, this is the couple that you're like, really? They're together? And then this is the couple that's like, really? They're still together? And then this is the couple that's like, yeah, but when they break up, I got a friend for her. You know what I mean? Like, this doesn't work. None of this stuff really works. None of it is terrible, but none of it really works. So, yeah, 4 out of 15 is, I think, quite fair. <laughs> it's quite fair for this movie, and that's kind of a shame, because again, this is the first thing I'm seeing Issa Rae in, and I'm like, oh, wow, I, I'm i sure her show is better, and you get, shows are a lot different than movies, right, you get more time to explore different things, and different stories, and all this other stuff, but I'm sitting there, I'm like, wow, this is not, this is, this probably shouldn't have been the first thing I've seen her in, <laughs> this probably, and probably shouldn't have been the first thing I know that I've seen this guy in, like, none of this stuff works, no, these people work. Oh, and one of the other things that doesn't work is for them to get into the sex cult, it's a black tie event. So they're at their friend's party and they have to borrow some clothes, right? They have to borrow some clothes from their friend's boyfriend, which fit uh, which fit uh, Jabroni. And it's like, okay, fine, maybe. Maybe they're about the same size or so. Tight suits are in, so, which, so fine. Her friend, cute is bigger than Issa Rae. her friend loans Issa Rae a dress, and it fits Issa Rae-ish, like, it's not tight, like, I would imagine it would be on the friend, uh, like, it's kind of loose, like, but not, like, loose, loose, but, like, it, it, it fits Issa Rae. and it's like, uh, that dress probably shouldn't fit as well as it does on Issa Rae. like, all these details, that I shouldn't have noticed, and I know it's me, I notice stupid shit all the time, but all this stuff I shouldn't have noticed because I should have been engrossed in the movie, I did, and because I wasn't, so that's why it gets 4 out of 15 for me, uh, party people, I've ranted long enough about this stupid movie, uh, I need to know from you, down there in the comment section, have you seen Lovebirds yet, were you planning on seeing Lovebirds? Uh, would you see it despite my review of it? Is there something I missed? Was there a reason? Was there something that, that I, sh was there a way I should have watched this aside from piss fucking drunk to enjoy it? And even then, I don't think I would have enjoyed it that well. Like, what, did I miss something? Tell me your thoughts about it down there in the comment section. Like, share, subscribe. Do me and you and the rest of the world a favor patreon.com slash surreal469 subscribe star dot com surreal46 slash surreal469 help keep the lights going on at the party uh like i mentioned like this share this subscribe to this um channel tell your folks to subscribe to the channel all those dummy accounts that you have on youtube yes i know you have them i know you have them because i got a couple too have those subscribe to Surreal469 so we can get these numbers up so I can make this money and stop fucking around with 
fucking driving people everywhere. Anyway, <laughs> fucking like, share, subscribe, uh, all that other stuff. And uh, in the meantime, the in-between time, so I can stop talking about this stupid fucking movie. Cheers. I'm a nice guy, I'm a nice place, with a nice smile, on my nice face, turn it back and I'm making sure my knife's straight, and when you're out of town, I'll be making sure your wife's straight.